Hey guys, Zaryu here, and today I'm going to be talking more about Shadowlands pre-patch 9.0 Frost Mage. Alright, in the last video I saw a lot of comments of people saying, Hey Zaryu, it's just pre-patch, don't judge things on pre-patch. Guys, yes, I'm aware, it is pre-patch, I'm giving you my thoughts on pre-patch, that's what these videos are for, alright? I am aware that things are going to change. I am also very aware that things that are broken right now may not be broken when the game actually launches. I'm giving you my thoughts on the current state of the game. All right, now, hop into this. I, just, I didn't think I had to say that. I didn't think I had to say that, but we had to say that, all right? Hopping in to the game here, all right? I wanna re-walk you guys through Frost Mage. So in the last video I did, I walked a little bit through Fire, a little bit through Frost, and a little bit through Arcane. Now in this video, I'm just gonna spend the entire video on Frost. Now that I've tinkered around a little bit, now that I've messed around a little bit, all right? Um, where should we go? Let's get out of Orgrimmar, man. It's too crowded up in here. It's too crowded. Let's go to Shat. Let's go to Shatrath City for this video. Um, but yeah, so a lot of things, guys, are feeling good about the current expansion. A lot of things are feeling um, like it still needs a little tweak, like it's a little clunky. But um, I'm actually not going to lie, I'm having a decent amount of fun right now um, in, in the expansion. So one thumbs up for that. Not two. Not two thumbs up yet, Blizzard. All right, But one thumbs up currently. All right, so Frost Mage guys hopping into it. I think after kind of messing around, testing around with um, all three specializations, Frost Mage does seem currently to be my favorite spec. Um, does that mean it's the best spec? Not necessarily. I think fire is pretty much the same fire that we saw in BFA. Very, very similar. Um, G Pi wasn't really played at high rated arenas when you played Rogue Mage. Um, so once again, there's going to be no G Pi played because it's nerfed. Um, it's just going to be short combusts. You farm a combust, you one shot with combust, you AFK, farm another combust. It's like the same thing. And then Arcane, um, it looks very similar to arcane bfa too a lot of spell steals a lot of arcane missiles lots of mobility um it's hard to kill the arcane mage but the arcane mage might not offer the burst um every 30 seconds maybe like a frost or a fire mage might be able to offer but anyway this video we're looking at frost mage um and in my last video i was actually playing a slightly different specialization and i want to walk you guys through what i'm currently playing and why um the reason I am not playing Lonely Winter anymore is because I've been doing some higher rated um, kind of like 2v2 arenas. Um, I have not tested out threes. Um, and let me just put a little asterisk, all right, because there are a lot of people down in the comments that love to type. Okay, a little asterisk. This is pre-patched. These are my initial thoughts, and everything I'm saying could change. All right, now that that's out on the table, okay, now that that's out on the table, um, I am playing with Bone Chilling right now, um, not Lonely Winner. So why am I not playing Lonely Winner? Let me just look at a, dam a random damage breakdown from a game from Twos. This is actually just not scripted. I'm just recording this video. Random, random game. Um, water Bolt from the Water Elemental ended up doing 8% of my damage. Okay. And then that is not including Bone Chilling itself which increases damage by 0.5, stacking up to 10 times. So 5% increased damage from Bone Chilling, okay? Um, onto all spell damage. So that means 5% on Frostbolt, 5% on Ice Lands. And realistically, it's not 5% all the time. It's only, it has maybe a 90% uptime or something like that. Um, maybe 80% uptime or 70% uptime. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Um, so maybe let's say like 3% extra damage in total on an entire game. So it gives you like 3% extra damage, but it's onto the critical abilities like Frostbolt, like Ice Lance. So it's like the things that are doing the most amount of damage right now are Frostbolt and Ice Lance, which is, by the way, Blizzard, this is why you got your one thumbs up because Frostbolt and Ice Lance doing the most amount of damage for a Frost Mage is... Oh, baby. It's wonderful. I love it. I love that Frostbolt and Ice Lance are my top damage dealers and not um, Icicle and Blizzard and Frozen Orb and Ice Nova and Comet Storm and Ancient Flame and random gushing wounds and stuff like that. I love that Frostbolt and Ice Lance are my top damage. That's great, okay? So 
why not Lonely Winter, right? It gives Frostbolt and Ice Lance 25% increased damage and Flurry. So that's like a lot of damage. Um, in theory, and, and and I played with Lonely Winter first, in theory, I thought Lonely Winter was better, which it could still be better in some situations, like in Wizard Mirrors or if your pet's dying. Um, if you're playing Mage Warlock and you don't need that extra pet Nova, um, I think Lonely Winter could. I, I think Lonely Winter could still be better in a lot of situations. So I don't want to discount Lonely Winter. I mean, in fact, I think Ice Nova could still be the pick. This first row is definitely very up in the air right now. I've done a lot of bone chilling testing yesterday, and I've been enjoying it. So the Water Elemental, why pick it or why not pick it? So the 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 value in the Water Elemental. I mean, you get a couple percent damage that helps i guess um and then you get a couple more percent damage with bone chilling so all in all you might get an extra 10 percent damage from choosing bone chilling although you would get an extra 25 percent damage from choosing lonely winner that's a big difference so it's like bizarre go with the 25 percent damage there's two reasons wh what's nice about the water alley one when you're playing melee against melees um or anyone really that's running around a pillar you can Nova them and get a cast off that you otherwise would have missed, right? So if I'm casting a Frostbolt, someone's running on a pillar, I can Nova them and then that cast actually lands. That's the first reason. I could polymorph someone, I could just Nova them and control them. So I'm killing someone and I Nova someone else, right? My healer is dying, there's two melees on him. I sheep one melee and Nova the other um, off of a fear. The control is invaluable in Arena. All right, that's the first reason, okay? The second reason, um, I guess that was kind of two reasons in one. One was the control, right? The control aspect of like Novaing someone just so they can't move. And then the second kind of reason was um, so that I'm gonna get a Frostbolt off that I wouldn't have gotten if that Frostbolt, um, if I didn't have the pet Nova. So that's like extra damage if you wanna think about it like that, right? So I wouldn't have gotten, so if someone's trying to line of sight, say like around a pillar like this, Okay, someone's trying to line me. I'm casting a Frostbolt. Okay, pretends it's a Frostbolt. I'm casting a Frostbolt and they're lining. I could Nova them in place. That Frostbolt would not have landed unless I pet Nova'd. So you're getting extra DPS through casts that wouldn't have landed. All right, so you're getting a, a, an, an actual hard 10% increase in damage with Bone Chilling. But then you're also getting an additional, um, with Bone Chilling plus the pet damage, and you're also getting an additional theoretical damage from the damage that would have missed if you didn't have the pet Nova. So that's two reasons why, why I'm liking the pet so far. And then the third reason is because of Deep Shatter. So your Frostbolt deals 150% additional damage to frozen targets. Pet Nova means you can Deep Shatter more. Okay, so Frostbolt into a pet Nova. All right, Frostbolt into a pet Nova means that you get the 150% damage to frozen targets once every 25 seconds. Um, and a lot of the times you can get a Frostbolt and an Ice Lance. So you get a Shattered Ice Lance every 25 seconds and a Deep Shatter Frostbolt every 25 seconds. What does that mean? That means in addition to the extra 10% damage, in addition to the more control, in addition to landing spells that you otherwise would have missed, you also get more damage from Deep Shatter, Frostbolt, and, and a Shattered Ice Lance every 25 seconds assuming you're actually trying to deal damage with it. What does this mean? This means on an opener, you can um, say, say two people are stacked on an opener, a kidney one, cheap shot the other, you poly off the kidney, normal rogue mage opener. We can frostbolt ice lance the guy we're killing with a claw or some type of unused trinket. Not even have to use frozen ore because they're not stacked, right? Like if they're stacked, you can't use AOE. You can't use common storm because it's AOE. You couldn't use ice nova because it's AOE. You can just frostbolt ice lance. Um, you could even go with a ray of frost. If you got a flurry, you could then flurry ice lance, ice lance. You're doing a lot of damage. It all stemmed from having this pet and being able to do on-demand damage. So that's kind of like four reasons. Um, I mean, you get damage anyway, you get the control, you get cast you otherwise wouldn't have, um, it's on-demand damage, and the, the deep shatter. So all of these reasons 
kind of are the reasons why I'm going with Bone Chilling instead of Lonely Winter right now, right? So that was, how long is this video? That was a 10 minute explanation for one talent row. I hope that's making sense. But like I said, that asterisk is still there. I think that Lonely Winter, if your pet's dying too much, or if you're playing Wizards where you don't need that extra Nova anyway, could be a good choice anyway. Um, so like in Shadow Priest Mage, Shadow Priest Mage Mirror, God Comp, God Comp Mirrors, Lonely Winter might be a better option because your pet is gonna die a lot. Um, having said that, there's a 30 second cooldown on the pet, so you can pretty much just always get a new pet, right? Like, even if it dies, you could just get a new one, like, like really fast, right? You can just keep getting it, so that's kind of nice. But if your pet's dying too much and you don't want to put up with the hassle and you're playing Wizard Mirrors where everyone's out in the open anyway a lot of the times, Lonely Winter might be a better option. Now, finally, Ice Nova. So Ice Nova is interesting, right? Why why not Ice Nova? It's an extra Nova, more deep shatters, more control, more damage, might just be better. It actually might be, I don't know. Um, the reason I haven't been playing it is, well, first of all, I actually don't really have a keybind because this expansion, man, since we have so many abilities back for every single spec, plus a lot of our old abilities, plus we have to save room for like covenant abilities. Um, you have to save like two keybinds for covenant abilities, it's crazy. Um, I actually like I'm like completely out of keybind space if you guys want to see my action bars down here too um, Crazy amount of keybinds, but anyway um, Ice Nova the the merit for taking it is that it does a lot of damage It is a little bit more control and you can deep shatter into it Those are like three good reasons Ice Nova could be pretty insane and like I said it actually might be the reason against Ice Nova is the way Mage plays right now is you want to keep Frostbolting to get Flurries. Why do you want Flurry? Frostbolt Flurry is like your big one shot because it procs Deep Shatter and it gives you two Ice Lances after and Flurry does a lot of damage and Frostbolt does a lot of damage, right? So by using Ice Nova, a lot of the time it's just like, um, by using Ice Nova, it's just like another Frostbolt that you could have fished for a Flurry. Having said that, I haven't done a ton of testing and I would actually love to play with Ice Nova more, right? I would love to play with Ice Nova more. Maybe, in fact, I'll play with it a bunch tonight and see how it feels, right? Having an extra uh, means to deep shatter is a huge deal because you can Frostbolt into the Ice Nova. Um, so it's something that we could, I could take a closer look at. But regardless, for the, a lot of the same reasons of Bone Chilling, having that pet with Ice Nova as well is really, really nice. Okay, so that's the first row. I'm going with Bone Chilling right now. Ice Nova could be a strong contender and Lonely Winter in cases where your pet is dying could also be um, at play here. Next one, Shimmer. Still feels like Shimmer is king even though it got nerfed to 25 seconds instead of 20 seconds in this expansion. Okay, so Shimmer previously was a 20 second recharge. Now the 25 second recharge hits hard. It actually sucks. Like I'm constantly finding myself out of blinks. It's it's brutal. Um, at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about what I want Blizzard to do, by the way. Um, but yeah, so Shimmer, 25 second recharge. It feels like I'm stuck a lot. Uh, warriors can just get to me now. I mean, with the 25 second recharge, it's like, it's just kind of hard, right? Warriors just kind of charge me and then I blink and then they leap, and then I'm just like, I can blink again, but then I'm just like out of blinks for like a minute, you know, 50 seconds. It's just like, ugh. Um, glacial installations doesn't doesn't provide nearly enough value, like at all, I, I don't think, at least. Um, in 1v1 situations against a rogue, I would probably go glacial installation, because um, you can blink their opener, right? Because you have actual blink, not shimmer. Um, and then ice flows, doesn't seem to be worth it. Just just not good enough, I don't think. So in Glacial Installation 1v1, Shimmer and Arena, I, I still think it's gonna be the best. Um, in Canner's Flow, Focus Magic and Arena Power. Um, this is a row that a lot of people, hey, Sar, have you tried Arena Power? I saw so-and-so one-shotting with it. All right, guys, Arena Power does one-shot. It does um, do a lot of damage. It does automatically proc off Icy Veins, and I know a lot of people are gonna be like, dude, it procs off Ice Form too. Yes, it does. It procs off Ice Form and Icy Veins. Um, one of, so why am I still playing in Canner's Flow? First of all, 
Ice form is on global cooldown, right? If I use ice form, press it, it's a global cooldown. It causes a global cooldown. Um, why is that a big deal? When you want to burst, pressing a button that does nothing for one whole second is like the worst possible thing. You have to factor that in to how much damage you're doing. Okay, so if you're pressing icy veins and it does nothing for a whole second, that is that should be factored into how much damage it's doing because in an arena match, fast paced, boom, 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 I need to sheep a guy, I need to do damage before the CC runs out, right? Before they get to use a defensive cooldown, okay? If I have to use a global on nothing, make like nothing, nothing actually happens when you press ice form, it's a global of nothing, right? That needs to be a consideration. And for high rated arena, just having an empty global, ice form, rune of power, means the first global you're doing is nothing. The second global you're doing is casting a Frostbolt, which is more nothing. It gives people time to react, trinket counterspell, and then you just don't actually get anything done here. All right, now the difference with um, Icy Veins is it's off global cooldown, right? I'm gonna press it right here. Instantly, I can do anything I want. Gives me that Fingers of Frost, doing a lot of damage with it, right? Um, now, and Canner's Flow is nerfed to 15% in Arena, and Runa Power is nerfed to 30% in Arena. So, and Canner's Flow is going to give you 4 to 15% passive um, damage buildup, right? So, 4 to 15, it's going to go up and then down in a cycle every 10 seconds. Runa Power is going to give you 30% damage on your burst windows with Icy Veins, assuming you're not really casting Runa Power by itself very often, at least. Would you rather have 4 to 15% damage all the time? or 30% damage some of the time, right? That's really what this comes down to. Four to 15% damage all the time, on your burst and not on your burst. So during consistent pressure and then not, and during your burst, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to use a global. It's just always there. Or would you rather have to use a global to get 30% damage? And then if you don't use the global, so you use Icy Veins, it's only every two minutes. Like what? Like, just think about it. What do you think would be better in a fast-paced arena action? Probably in Canner's Flow. Now, like I said, I could be wrong here. Could be wrong here. I don't know 100%. Um, plus, I don't know how the metagame is going to feel. Maybe the metagame is very slow. In a very slow metagame, you know, sitting back and just building a rune of power and doing more damage might be better. In a very fast metagame where you have enough damage to kill anyway, and Canner's Flow is better. So it depends on the, how the meta feels, right? Um, both of them could be good depending on how the meta feels is a better way to say that um, and then focus magic I have not done much testing um, at all so you get someone else 5% crit and when the target crits um, your chance to crit with spells increased by 5 for 10 seconds um, so you just it's it's focus magic old school focus magic you give someone crit and then you can get crit back but it's only with spells would this be good Man, I don't know. I don't know if this would be good. 5% crit isn't like a huge deal. I mean, it's a it's a pretty big deal, but 5% crit for two people versus 4 to 15% spell damage. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. I'm trying to think even in like Shadow Priest Mage or Warlock Mage, this, is this worth it? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That's, I mean, that's all I can say. Maybe it's worth it in Shadow Priest Mage or Warlock Mage Double Wizards. But in Rogue Mage, you're going to Canners anyway, because it's only spells, right? So, uh, so yeah, maybe in Wizards, but that's all I can just shrug on that one. Next row, Frozen Touch, Chain Reaction, Ebon Bolt. Frozen Touch seems to be the best choice here. Why? Because Brain Freeze and Fingers of Frost are really good now, right? Really good now. Why is Brain Freeze so good? Because it procs two Winner's Chill Ice Lances. That's just good, right? So... Having that Winner's Chill um, proc twice means a lot of the playstyle of Frost is fishing for brain freezes so that you can flurry one-shot people. That is Frost Mage right now. That's that's how Frost operates right now, right? You're fishing for flurries, you're fishing for brain freeze, then you're going for one-taps on your on your goes. Fish for brain freeze, get CC, burst. Fish for brain seize, get CC, burst. That's Frost Mage, right? Um, so having a... 36% chance as opposed to a 30% chance to get that brain freeze is huge. 6% extra on every frostable. That's awesome. Ebon Bolt would give you a guaranteed brain freeze every 45. 
and it hits hard. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it could be, I mean, Ebon Bolt hitting hard and giving you a guaranteed brain freeze could be at the play. Frozen Touch just giving you more brain freezes could be the play. I've seen both played at high ratings last expansion and the expansion before, so I don't think it's a crazy trade-off either way. I think they both can be viable options. Um, I think I prefer Frozen Touch at the moment. You also gain increased fingers, by the way, an extra 3%, 15 to 18 um, for Fingers of Frost, so that's not bad either. Um, but overall, I would say Frozen Touch is probably what I'm leaning towards currently. Um, so when I started this video, we started with Frigid Winds. Um, um, why, why Frigid Winds, why Ring of Frost? Um, so Ice Sword just is bad because you already have a pet Nova and a normal Nova, so having a third Nova just DRs everything. So having two is actually the perfect amount. You don't want more. So Ice Sword's bad. Frigid Winds. Um, Ice Sword maybe could be good if you went Lonely Winter and, and another Legendary that we can talk about in another video. But right for, for this intense purpose, it's bad. Frigid Winds give you the 10% uh, movement speed, extra slow. So in 2v2, when you're trying to just do damage and dampen, and you're not really necessarily going for CC, you're just, like, when you're playing 2v2 with a healer, Frigid Winds is a good choice, okay? When you're playing 2v2 with a healer, Frigid Winds is a good choice. If you're dampening people in threes, you're playing the Warlock, Frigid Winds could also be a good choice. You're just more slows, more... Um, opportunities to kill the target because they can't line more better, right? Um, Ring of Frost. When you're playing with a rogue and you're going for a sheep, having that alternate sheep, aka Ring of Frost, in the Frost Tree when you get locked out on Arcane is invaluable. So when you're playing with a rogue, always Ring of Frost, pretty much insane. When you're doing 1v1s, a lot of the times I would also say Ring of Frost, being able to um, like Nova CS, Ring of Frost, a mage, or Nova, Ring of Frost, a rogue, or a rogue puts down a smoke bomb and you ring around it. There's lots of utility with it. I think it's a fantastic choice overall. Ring of Frost, most of the time, Fridge wins, twos, um, or dampening. Um, twos with healer or dampening. Next row, Freezing Rain, it doesn't seem to be worth an extra Blizzard unless people are really dampening. Doesn't seem to be worth splitting ice is actually a great choice, I think. Um, if you're playing a like affliction warlock frost mage right dampening you're 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 dealing damage to everything you're not doing cc burst cc burst cc burst you're just killing everything splitting ice is a fantastic way to do that right because you get five percent more damage on ice lands five percent more damage on ice skulls and you're splitting to nearby targets you're just doing a lot more damage with splitting ice it's it's a great choice if you don't care about breaking cc now if you're playing the rogue, you don't want to break blind, you don't want to break poly, it's very important you land CC and then burst, CC and then burst. Splitting ice is going to break the CC so you cannot play it. Um, but, and then a lot of you might be thinking, well, Comet Storm breaks CC too. Yes, but you don't have to press Comet Storm. No one's making you press Comet Storm, so just don't hit Comet Storm, just don't touch it. All right? Only hit Comet Storm if they're not stacked, then Comet Storm when it's not going to break CC. All right, 200 IQ. Thermal Void, Ray of Frost, Glacial Spike. So, okay, so Thermal Void is actually probably the choice if there is no Purge on the enemy team. Meaning, there's no Shaman, there's no Mage, there's no, the, the DKs have a Purge still, probably. Demon Hunter, I don't know, maybe. Um, Priest, right? Like, almost everything can Purge these days. So pretty much never play Thermal Void. But if you're fighting like Resto Druid, hunter right if there's actually no purge even a warlock pet has a purge um but if there's no purge on the enemy team thermal void's a great choice you don't run into that very often but say you're fighting like mistweaver warrior windwalker sure thermal void's gonna be the most value in this row doesn't happen very often but occasionally go with it ray frost ray frost is good if someone's running around a pillar right and and you want to continue doing damage, it's channeled ability, so you can actually Ray of Frost before they go around the pillar, Ray of Frost, kill them, it's fantastic, it's phenomenal, all right? So Ray of Frost, um, before a Hunter's Turtle, right, Deterrence, um, if someone's going around the pillar, it's just a nice ability to have. Um, if, if people are stacked, it's a little bit more damage than just casting non-flurried Frost Bolts, right? It's, it's just nice to fill in the rotation, Glacial Spike, kind of a lot of people. Hey, Zar, Glacial Spike, bro. Dude, yeah. Um, glacial Spike, guys. 
Casting five frost bolts to get one nuke a lot of the time is too slow. The reason I say a lot of the time is because if you're playing a damp comp in the slow metagame, so if the metagame is slow and Mage Shadow Priest is the best comp or Mage Warlock is the best comp and you're playing back, you're not really going to pillars, Glacial Spike will be good. Now, if the best comp is Rogue Mage, it's a quick metagame. It's just like stun, 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 CC burst, kill. It's too slow. You can't get five frost bolts off. The game is happening without you, bro. Everything's happening without you. You're like, oh, hold on, let me get a Glacial Spike. It's like, dude, the guy could have already been dead. Like, we could have killed him without Glacial Spike with just a couple Ice Lances. Like, it's just too slow of an ability. My personal guess is Glacial Spike's gonna be too slow. Getting five frost bolts to, ma to maybe one-shot someone is just like, we could have just CC'd and one shot him anyway with just Frost Bolts, Ice Lances, and Flurries. Like all instant casts. Like, why farm out a Glacial Spike, right? So, in Arena, most of the time, I think it's not the play. However, if people, if the metagame is slow, meaning people are having a hard time killing each other, and the metagame shapes up to Mage and Warlock come out in the open, and you're just kind of sitting there doing nothing, yeah, I can farm out five Frost Bolts really easily, in fact. And then I'll have a big one shot. So, that's how that works, right? Slow metagame, it's good. Fast metagame, it's bad. Um, next, Deep Shatter, pretty much an always lock-in. Concentrated Coolness, probably almost always a lock-in. Why am I playing Dampened? Um, in the pre-patch, Ancient Flames really OP, so it helps with that. Um, I think Dampened Magic, you know, against Dot Cleaves is just good in general. Prismatic Cloak could be good defensively. Um, Club to Mania against Resto Druids is, is what I like to play. Um, Ice Form, like I said, it, it could be okay with Rune. I, I don't think it will be just because it's on Global. By the way, the fact that it's on global might be a bug. Blizzard, if you're watching this, maybe it's a bug. Um, Icy Veins is off global. Maybe they kept Ice Form on on purpose or an accident. I don't know. If they take Ice Form off a of global, I would highly consider playing Ice Form and Rune of Power because then all of a sudden you can just pop it every 45 seconds and then flurry Ice Lance, Ice Lance. You're doing a lot of damn. All right, that could be fantastic, but we'll see. I love Ice Form as an ability, so if they do that, that could be pretty solid. Um, Frostbite is good if you're playing Lonely Winter. If you're not playing Lonely Winter, do not go Frostbite because you're going to DR all your own Novas. Versicola doesn't seem worth. Netherwind Armor, I'm getting it for free right now with Conflict Major, but most of the time it's not worth. So what does that leave us with? <clears throat> that leaves us with Chill to the Bone. I wanted to end this video talking about this talent because I think it's a cool talent. Your Frost Nova and your Water Elementals Freeze deal 919 Frost damage when the effect ends and the damage is doubled if Frost Nova or Freeze are dispelled. Why do I like this talent? Because I think Water Elementals Freeze should be this big every 25 seconds, boom, big damage, right? Freeze, breaks, boom, scary, shatter combo, old school, burning crusade, TBC, Watlaka, all right? You Frost Bolt, Freeze, Ice Lands, and explode an enemy off the face of the planet Earth, okay? So, with Shield of the Bone, I think, I think this should be, like, so no one plays Shield of the Bone, it's a bad talent. In fact, it only works when the effect ends, not when the Frost Nova breaks. I think this talent is actually a really cool design um, if you tweak it. So I really hope Blizzard's listening to this one. This is my idea. Shield of the Bone needs to deal, like, 2,500 damage um, on your Water Elementals Freeze, okay? So like a lot more damage and it needs to work when the pet nova breaks meaning if i frost bolt into a pet nova the chill to the bone breaking will actually affect the damage maybe that's how it's supposed to work in its bug but it's not working like that currently it's only when it ends naturally so if i nova and then don't touch it that's when chill to the bone is actually working right um so if they did that what would that mean that means when you frost bolt into a pet nova, you're getting deep shatter, the frost bolt, the ice lands, and the chill to the bone, 2,500 damage, or however much they end up making it. That would be big burst every pet nova. That'd be amazing. That'd be like, oh my gosh, we got burning crusade shatter combos back. Like that would be really cool. That would actually be incredible. So Blizzard, if you're watching, there's a lot of ways to fix mage. And to be honest, if I were to design mage, there's a lot of things I would probably do different. But Assuming this is pretty much what we're gonna have for this expansion. This is pretty much how mage is gonna be looking and, and shaping up. The one simple change would be buff chill to the bone to make mages feel like scary on those shatter combos. 
for the Shield of the Bone um, doing damage when the effect ends, okay? Um, if you don't want to like triple the damage, you can maybe just double it, like maybe 1500 damage or, or 2000 damage. Um, but it needs to be when the when the water elementals freeze breaks. And I'm not too concerned with normal Frost Nova, it's mainly the water elemental freeze, but if you want to do both, sure. Um, the damage is just dis doubled if Frost Nova freeze or dispel, like you can get rid of that part if you want. That that part's not very necessary at all. But the, the big part with Shield of the Bone, like no one has ever used this talent. This talent is 0% pick, no one uses it ever. So. Um, if you're a game designer looking like, okay, why is no one picking this? If you want this to be a, a, a fun pick, just double the damage it does, remove the bottom part, and then uh, make it so when the effect breaks, it's dealing damage. Now, with Shield of the Bone like that, woohoo! I would be loving some Frostbolt Pet Nova Ice Lances, just like the old school, all right? Just like in Burning Crusade, just like in Wrath. It would be so, so, so much fun to mess around with that. So I'm gonna end the video on that. I really hope something like that happens because that would just be amazing. I don't wanna get my hopes up, but I think that would be like an easy fix to make Frost Mage feel fun um, with, with that extra Shield of the Bone DPS. But for now, it's not worth it. But with that, guys, that's the video. That's my, my thoughts on Frost. As I play more Frost, I'll probably do another one of these videos a little bit shorter. Um, and then as I play more arcane and fire, I'll also be updating you guys on that um, So right now it's pre patch we're, we're gonna get into the expansion. We're gonna get covenant abilities We're gonna get legendaries a lot of this is gonna change, but this is what I'm feeling right now is pretty solid Guys if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you did not enjoy the video Make sure to give it a big thumbs down. I'm, I'm not gonna lie guys I just talked 31 minutes straight with uh, with one cut. I had no cuts in this video at all is crazy um, I, I need to get some water. I need to take a sip of water or something. Guys, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed that 30-minute video talking about pre-patch major zero cuts. All right, hit the little bell notification next to it and follow me over on Instagram. My Instagram is down below um, if you want to check out some Zaryu IRL content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.